Hey, everybody. Welcome to Challenge Accepted. I am Frank, and I'm joined by Thomas. What's going on, everybody? And today we are talking about the fantastic RRR. All right, Thomas, you're the one that challenged me to this movie, and uh, it is so incredibly good. I've never seen it before. It's one of those that's like, yeah, I, I know it won an Oscar for uh, Best Song, and it just, everything about this movie is really good. What'd you think? Uh, yeah, phenomenal. I mean, we were already talking about it. We were going so in-depth before we even hit record, so <laughs> I'm glad we did it because this is the longest from me watching something to recording that we've ever done in the show. So my memory might be a little spotty, but you know, that conversation fired me up to talk about it more. I watched it last night and was just like popcorn glued to the screen. So, so good. Um, we're going to do that. <laughs> let's do the recap first. Cause I think this is going to be one of those movies where we just go off. So let's get your recap. You're the one in charge of that. And you got, we're going to do two, uh, two minutes. I'm setting the timer now and go. All right. So we start in the, and again, we might mess up the names. Uh, we're going to try to be respectful and pronounce as best we can, but we may have a little issue here. So I'm running out of time now. Um, we start <laughs> in the forest and we see that Molly is taken by the British army. I believe um, the mom gets completely whacked or it's so brutal. Um, we then get brought to the fire in the outskirts of Delhi and we see people rioting and uh i don't know there might be like a thousand people out there ten thousand i don't know how many people but we meet uh sid rama raju played by ram sharan and uh man he just starts whooping dat ass he just comes out with like a stick and just beats off like a thousand people wow that sounds terrible didn't mean to make it sound dirty <laughs> uh we then are introduced to the water we meet beam he like fully takes down a tiger by himself. It's pretty wild. Um, he's considered the shepherd of his people. And we don't quite know what his deal is, but we know that his sister is missing or a girl is missing. Um, and then Beam sees Jenny. Obviously, he starts. Uh, he has like an attraction to Jenny, who is this like mm -hmm. sweet British girl. Uh, then we're 40 minutes in. Boom, title sequence. I'm like, what? We're already 40 minutes in. This is crazy. Uh, the guys meet. They create this beautiful friendship. Um, by saving this kid off a bridge, which is like this epic scene, uh, we start seeing the different sides come out. We realize that Raju, because he's on the British side, needs to find this rebel leader. He's trying to find Beam and opposite. Beam is trying to go against Raju so that he could save Mali. They end up, uh, he tries to save Mali in this crazy action sequence. They face off. They go different uh, um Five seconds. They go away and then they save each other at the end, reconnect, epic battle at the end. One's fire, oh. one's water, and save their people. Uh, man. A lot happens. Epic. A lot happens, <laughs> a lot yeah. Happens. A lot happens. And it's just such a fun ride, man. I, I truly do love this movie. I was pitching to so many people and I'm like, man, just think of the Avengers, but like the, the most awesome buddy cop movie in a way, too. Yes. And also, like, there's like a hidden identities involved with it as well. I don't know. How do you describe it? If you like, how would you describe it? I mean, it's it really hard. Okay. So first off, I want to make sure to, sh to talk about how many times they did like slow motion hero shots. So many of them. Oh, and like, yeah. no, like DC does them. And I feel like, oh, these are cheesy. These guys do. Cause everything's a little more exaggerated. This is almost anime in a way. It's like live yeah. action anime. It feels like, but in, and, a, in the best possible way. Exactly. And like the, there, are, there are many times where I'm like, that entire thing in the beginning where it feels like 300, where he's just going to go out there and arrest a guy amongst thousands. Oh, yeah. It was like, this is like the 300. This is, this is how I feel like in a video game when like the quest, the quest giver is like, oh, you got to go in there and save the princess, or whatever. And I'm like, give me the sword. I'm good to go. That's what this guy just straight up did. And it was remember, awesome. Yeah. Remember Dynasty Warriors? <laughs> yeah. It feels like yeah. Dynasty Warriors where you're just, you're just one dude slaying. against like thousand, ten thousand people. Yeah. That yeah. was him. And, and it works and it's cool. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's just, man, these guys just feel powerful, but human at the same time. And I love that part of it. Yeah. Uh, and both of their motivations, when you find out what they are, I feel like uh, Raju's motivations, you kind of discover way later, but it's kind of nice because it, there's a twist in there. Oh, but yeah. It you, almost feels like a sequel. When, by the time you find out about Raju, yeah. it feels like they. I thought the movie should have at first when I was watching it. I was like, oh, this movie should end right here, but we still have half the movie to go. Right. But then after that point, they're like, okay, now let's explain the rest of this movie where you learn about Raju. And you're like, how in the hell are they going to 
throw this big of a twist in halfway through this movie <laughs> yeah. and gave they basically gave you the sequel, I think, honestly, or the part two. And uh, mm-hmm. man, it blew me away. The there were so many amazing action sequences, but the first one that was like this, it Marvel doesn't do this good half the time, where they one's on a horse and the other one's on a motorcycle. And they go off the bridge and then like swing towards each other and like perfectly timed. Yeah. And it's so badass that I was just like, I, I, I cannot wait to share this movie with others. I tried to buy this. I told you about this. I, while watching this was like, I got to buy this on like collector's edition, Blu-ray. They mm-hmm. never released it on Blu-ray. There's no know, physical I, edition of this. That's crazy. And just a total miss uh, for whoever was in charge of the studio or whatnot. Like, Put that thing on Blu-ray. I would buy it on Blu-ray. They were saying, I was reading up on it on Reddit, and they were saying that uh, a lot of India's studios stopped releasing physical copies during COVID because streaming services got real cheap and popular, and to where it was just like, it's just easier just to throw them on streaming services now. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, but, but still, I want, I want it. I want to go back to the bridge part, though, because yes. this is the first part in the movie where they acknowledge each other, and yeah. I think... Uh, what is it? Beams on the river and Raju's up on top of the bridge already. Yes. And the kids are below and they kind of give, you know, they look at each other and they see each other from the distance. And so at that anime. moment they're like, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Maybe that's why I love it so much. Yeah. But, but it's like exactly what you'd expect from like Dragon Ball Z or something like that. Like, <laughs> I recognize you from a mile away. You know? Yeah. Like, the yes. Goku and Vegeta look at each other. They're like, all right, time to team up. <laughs> yeah. That's it. You know, but that team, that acknowledgement from them, Without any words. No words the entire time. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. And then, you know, he comes up on the motorcycle. The other guy's on the horse. They wrap the rope around their arms. And just through hand signals and eye contact, they're like, okay, you're going there. And the first time I'm watching this, I'm like, oh, am I, what's the plan? Like, is he going to like, you know, jump off the side and the other guy's going to tie it to the motorcycle or something? Yeah. And then, no, they just come head first at each other, playing chicken, going opposite sides. And both of them jump over the bridge i was like whoa dude like what is this it just it cracked me up and amazed me at the same time and it's just so beautifully shot it, yeah it's you know it, it almost kind of reminds me of the first hawkeye uh in avengers the first avengers where hawkeye jumps off the side and shoots that that arrow up and he then he it hits the edge he swings down that yeah. shot is so iconic i feel like this shot stands up there with it there were so many parts about it too like when he's when one's dipping the flag in the water and the other one knows instinctively to wrap it around himself so he can go through the fire again. Right. It was, it was a moment when we're not only introduced to how cool the action is in this movie, but how these two have immediately immediate synergy. And I just think that's super right. cool. Um, I want to address real quick, uh, because I've been reading up on this, these characters a little bit. We don't know anything really about India's history. Legit learned a lot through Ms. Marvel. That shows you where my knowledge is. We're just not taught that much in this, in, in, about India's history in our culture. Sadly, me too. And Miss Marvel, I loved it. So from what I understand, this is basically two of their historical superheroes, really. Possibly three. And and then the credits are like at the very end, the final dance, I think they kind of like show these are the characters we're based off of. They never met in real life, but they were both freedom fighters. And this is like, if you were to imagine, they became best friends. So I think like the America version of this is like, can you imagine if like George Washington and Abraham Lincoln teamed up? I think that's what this is kind of like for them. I, from my understanding. Right on. Okay. That's so cool. I knew that there had to be some type of historical element because they're praying to some of the gods. And then yeah. also they represent these mystical powers, right? Like some one represents the fire. I don't know of the soul of the nation or the people or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then the other one is this water, this, this fluid presence who is the protectors, the shepherd of his village. Yeah. And it's like, such a cool concept, man. Uh, oh, God. Yeah. So obviously you're right. Don't know a lot, but oof, this I feel like this is teaching me a lot more, hopefully, about the country. Maybe I'm completely wrong. I don't know. But I just love this movie so yeah, much. I again. think it's like trying to learn American history through Avengers. It, we, we're probably, <laughs> probably they even said right? like it's completely fictionalized. Yeah. Like these characters didn't meet in real life. But I do like the idea of like it's just a cool glimpse. There's so many cool things about this. Uh, let's go to the actual like main actual story of this. It's a good concept, right? You have these two guys with what seems like opposing ideas and they're, they're hunting each other in a lot of ways. Uh, one is the shepherd. I, I wrote them in my notes as the soldier and the shepherd the whole time. Cause I couldn't get the names right. Nice. So, but you have like this one that's the shepherd of his people and he's out just to save this one girl and will do anything for her. The other one 
looks like he has blind ambition and and we're just like dude you're a traitor to your people it's what it feels like to us and feels like to a lot of right. people around him and for the first half of the movie it is that case but just like these two they they're so close to revealing their identity to each other and like there's so many times when it's like oh here's the paper that has a picture of your friend or your brother yeah and yeah <laughs> i just love that back and forth that was a really good like subtle tension moments amongst this blossoming friendship it was really cool you're right yeah that, that you're right i i didn't like think about that as much because this is now like the second time i've watched it yeah and yeah you're right there's so many moments of like he's gonna find oh he's gonna find out oh and yeah. you know it just narrowly misses and it allows that friendship to grow and and it's like Man, I'm going to be so sappy about this. But as guys, you know, I, you know, I'm I'm in my mid 30s. It's like it's sometimes hard to make new friends. It is. Yeah. You know, and it's not always the easiest thing. And to see these guys on film who are like the manliest of men, who are just these warriors and beasts become friends and like get each other's back. One of my favorite parts of the movie was when B is it? Yeah. When Beam sees uh, Jenny. He sees Jenny and he and they're on the motorcycle. And he's like, he grabs the nails and then yeah. drops the nails in front of her car so that it would pop her tires. So she'd have to pull over and then Beam could go talk to her. And I just love that. I was like, ultimate wingman move. I was yeah. like, I want to be friends with these guys. Like, that's where it's at. Like, it was just I like oh, how man. <laughs> I like how one is clearly more suave than the other one. But it's like he's sharing his suaveness. Like, let me show you some tricks that I've got. And then. Yeah, it's just it's like Beam's natural, just like I'm a nice guy is what really wins the day. But it's, you know, it's just yeah, well, it's because like and I took it as well. Raju has somebody who he already loves, like he yeah. already has Sita, who, you know, we find out later on that she's, you know, waiting for him in the village and that he broke this or that broke this necklace in half. And you have the other half and my heart yeah. won't be complete till I'm with you. So he gets to just be the ultimate wingman because he already is devoted to someone else you know and right. and that's just like there's just so many beautiful elements like that where you're like damn they just really thought of everything and connected it so damn well i oh my gosh let's let's I is wonder, it too soon to talk about the party that they go to well before we go farther you were talking we we're talking about how that much the, one thing i want to mention the director ss raja, raja molly molly um said the film was about an imaginary friendship between two superheroes he later went on to speak about the importance of unapologetically showing male friendship on screen. They wanted to make it to where there is, it's just two guys becoming best friends. And like, that's fine. Like we're in, in a lot of Western culture, especially, I feel like there's like the, what up bro? Like that kind of thing. And then he's just like, I want to just show like all of a sudden these guys click and it works out well. Yeah. I and, mean, and think so about our examples. Sure that no, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. I think, like think about our examples, right? We like rush hour, right? Or yeah. Avenger or whatever, you know, it's always people are contentious first. Like the American version, yeah. rarely do people start off good and stay good. And I, I'm sure, you know, somebody listening to this is like thinking of an example, like this is an example. How could you guys miss it? I can't Falcon think and of Steve one. Rogers. Let's, let's talk about, let's talk about okay. Sam Wilson and Steve oh, Rogers. Because when they first meet, they're kind of like poking fun at each other while they're jogging around on the tracks. And yeah. It's almost like that's how we have to start off with kind of like checking each other first. And then, you know, it develops into a friendship that that's strong. You're, you're so right. But even in that movie, that's not the main focus. True. And, and that's not that's almost like a B plot in the whole story. And I I do like that friendship. And I think you nailed it. That's a perfect example. But I think if we want to focus on two people becoming friends mainly, and that's usually the main story. Again, I'm thinking of Rush Hour. I watched the that Rush Hour one recently. Sure. They're like butting heads almost all the way to the end. Does that movie still hold up? I think so. There's a few okay. jokes in there. You're a little like, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah, if you yeah. can do that anymore. But, but damn, is it still good? I, can't, I man, want got, another one, man. I love those two together. Yeah, I know. I, I thought there was a Rush Hour three coming out. I don't know. But the, yeah, the great movie. And their friendship is beautiful, just like these guys. And I just, yeah, I loved seeing that. Um. There's another part where he wingmans him very hard and it's at the party. Yes. Yeah. And, that was so awesome. <laughs> right. I wanted to learn how to dance like that. It's so cool. I, this is the most, okay. How do I explain this? God, this movie blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most natural dance battle I've ever seen. Like this actually feels like a dance battle that might've actually happened. 
but also is the most unrealistic dance battle because it's a full set like going off on a dance battle. How cool was oh, it that yeah. they were dancing on like dirt and it created like this dust cloud as they're dancing to where it was just like, this is so cool looking. <laughs> it's so oh awesome. My God. Yeah, I mean, just the visuals on it, it's beautiful. It starts off like really personal. It's just one on one, you know, uh, that British guy who's a dick and then uh, beam. And yeah, and he like pushes him down, makes him look embarrassed or, you know, embarrasses him. And then the band starts getting into it. Roger comes in with the backup and the (laughs) drums and then everybody slowly gets involved. You're right. It like feels like something that could have happened. Obviously not this exaggerative and not like this over the top and bombastic, but you're like, maybe there was a scene where, you know, he was like, well, I'm not going to dance like you. I'm going to dance like how we dance and I'm going to show you how it's done. And then, Dude, it just oh man, and it, and just you're right. Like the the way they kick up the dirt, the choreography. I'm like, man, these guys can act. They can do drama. They can do action, and then they can dance their asses off and just I'll come out with the most today. phenomenal. I'm watching it again after this, man. It's so right. fucking good. I mean, and it makes sense why they show it at the Oscars. You know, it yeah, well they, they, deserved. It was really. I watched that video after watching this actually, and uh, they did a really good job. It was a different. It was like the stage cast or whatever. It wasn't actually them. But that dance, they had it down really good. It was really cool. I liked during the movie, though, like they, they finally got out that little loser dude. But then they looked at each other and it was like, yeah. you know, and then Raj was like, oh, she's cheering him on. I'll fake it out. I'll, I'll dip out. Like, mm-hmm. yes. Oh, it's yeah. so good. <laughs> but I mean, even, oh, yeah, so good. And then the, the another part that I like about that is that it also shows that they're each other's equals and rivals at the same time. Yeah. Right. So it's like just foreshadowing what's going to happen because we're like, I don't want these two friends to eventually fight, you know, but, you know, it's coming but because you know they're on coming. opposite sides, like their Feels goals me. are opposed. And and then, you know, Roger, like basically, you know, taps out. But he's like, I need to make you look good. And I'm like, yeah. dude, the ultimate wingman. I can't say that enough. You know, like I know. I'm happily married. I love my wife. But man, if I had a wingman like that, I who who knows? You know, there would have yeah. been a bunch of other crazy adventures. But just a life yeah. wingman, just like somebody who's just rooting a you life wingman, bro. Well it, said. It, that uh, the snake bite scene, like when he's when Raju's like dying on the streets and he's like and. My, the mixed emotions like, no, let him you have to let him die so you could save India, you know? Yeah. And he was just beating and, down your brother while yeah, interrogating you. This is your brother's one chance of survival was his bite, which I do like how Raju like cuts. He's like, it'll take 24 hours to get out of this tie. So because at that point, I think we learned a little bit that Raju's I think that's when we learned that Raju's like actually not fully a jerk yet. Right. Like he's Before a double fully, agent. We eventually learn. Yeah, he's definitely a double agent. But it's but it's after this. Oh, but, right, right. So it was like our first little hint, like, oh, wait a minute. Raju's actually, you know, maybe understanding the British people aren't great. We learn later mm-hmm. on. He definitely knows that. Um, but when he's dying on the street and then all of a sudden, oh, man, when he. Oh, it's so heartbreaking. He takes off his prayer uh, necklace. I don't know the right term for it. Again, I don't yeah. want to step in hot water on this, but he takes it off and puts it over him. And everybody's like, don't take that off. Don't take that off. And he's like, no, it'll protect him. Mm-hmm. And then later on, when he uses that necklace to grab his wrist and stop him from being able to finish off the captain it was like bro betrayal just yeah. sacrifice everything stacked on once marvel why can't you just just give everybody in this movie uh, one of the avengers just give them one of them until they make a movie about <laughs> i know them. i know i kind of wish one of these guys and i love kamal Nanjiani. he's like he's i love him like every i try to watch everything he's in just because yeah, i love him so great. much but uh man i kind of wish this guy who played rom was his character or i think it's kingo Eternals. I know that's not fair to say, but yeah, I kind of wish just because I love this guy and he's so good looking again. But oh man, uh, I sound like I have a crush on him. I'm like Googling <laughs> superheroes from India so we could figure out who Marvel could do with these guys. <laughs> yeah, for real. Uh, the other part, I mean, and while you look that up, yeah, there is now the scene where Beam goes into invade. I don't know what you want to call it, the castle or the fortress where he believes Mali is. and that scene in itself is too, too insane, right? They drive in with that truck guy drifts yeah. the truck, boom, cages <laughs> open and the whole Tied force of the down. animal kingdom comes out, which is great. Cause they were calling him the king of the jungle. And I was like, Oh, he's bringing the jungle in on the British people who have been pushing back the jungle this entire time. And it, it felt what? very just much blew like my mind did not <laughs> think about that, <laughs> but it felt very much like, uh, uh, by the way, I don't know why we thought of, didn't think about the Spider-Man India. Just give him that one. 
Ooh. There you go. Hell yeah. And it was so, um, but yeah, I was just like, this is the end of an Avengers movie. This is exactly Civil War right now, which is like Tigers. And, uh, but no, it's <laughs> just the halfway point. <laughs> yeah. Yep. The halfway point. Um, I know, I don't think we talked about this enough. I mean, it's so wonderful to see Ray Stevenson too, right? I mean, we get to see him. Yeah. Um, late gray, you know, unfortunately we just lost him re- like recently as we're recording this and he plays like just an, like a evil bad guy. Just, Oh, it just really digs in the knife and you're like, oh, yeah. and of course, you know, this is nothing about who he is as a real person. I heard he was just a lovely person in real life, but the character in this movie is such a dick. Like, and his wife too. Like his I wife just, is, oh, oh my God, he's so not bleeding evil. enough and stuff like that during the whooping scene, which was so fucking hard to watch right right and so yeah let's let's talk about that scene uh you know i think this is the point where raju realizes that beam is he's more than just a great person and one of his best friends he's this symbol for the people that can show them like we can we can do this we're strong together we don't yeah. need to let the british run over us like they are and it's important to note also that this now we are we have so after the big attack, we have a complete stoppage of the movie essentially to show a new origin story for Raju that explains that he is a freedom fighter and his one goal is to get a weapon for everybody in his village so that they can rise up and attack back. Which again, yeah, I don't know themselves. how right. I don't know how accurate this is, but that does sound like something that we're like, oh, I bet that happened in real history. I don't know. But right. so now all of a sudden. So we got that whole thing, which it itself is an amazing, like short movie about the, what is it called? Uh, load, aim, shoot, load, yeah. aim, shoot. Halfway through the movie, all of a sudden we have a new saying that I want to get on a t-shirt. It's crazy. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so then the whipping means so much more because if we didn't have that, we wouldn't understand the whipping as much, but he's seeing that beam can, ins- can bring revolution in a new way through the fire of the people not through the fire of weapons. And it's like, damn, these two together, man. Well so said, put good. that in the review. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But you, you're right. And yeah, they do such a good job of using the flashbacks to progress their current story. Yes. And that's what I'm, I'm noticing or like thinking out loud as you were saying that this movie just does it so well. And yeah, we learn more about Roger and we learn about his dad and this heartbreaking story, you know, his dad was trying to teach the, his people how to defend themselves and, and not get steamrolled by the British. And, you know, they're training every day and it's like full on military training. But there's this story in there as well that it, that also ties to the bigger theme of, do you know what this bullet cost? Yeah. And the bullet cost thing, it just hits so hard, so you know? Brutal. Yeah. Like the British think that this bullet costs more than your life. And they won't even waste it on you if they need to, because this, this again is a higher value than your life. And it just, ah, oh, man, Ray Stevens, story. the way he delivers that story every time. Cause it was a flashback when a flashback, but we see Ray Stevens give the story again. And it's just like, bro, uh, you did such a good job making me hate you in this movie. Yeah. Cause the way he delivers it is he has like such disdain for you find another way to hit them or, or beat them or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, or that's like literally a Nazi death. tactic. It's so crazy. It's so crazy and it's so cruel and it just doesn't make any sense. But you're like, yeah, if this is the way they treat them, how horrible, how terrible. And that does. Now you see the commitment. You, you, I, I don't know. I, I tend to side more towards beam in the story, like who I like more, but you know, I was more of a Raju fan. That's funny. <laughs> there you go, man. Fire and water, <laughs> double dragon. But but we that flashback, I think, does a lot for his character. We get to see why he's so dedicated to I'm going to rise up in the ranks. I'm going to get this weapon for everybody. And we also see how skilled he was even as a little kid. That part where I think it's Sita as a little girl shows Mm -hmm. the dad that the target. And then he's like, did you shoot it from there? And then, you know, the camera then pans away and it's like, no, over there. And you see this little hill on top, like way off in the distance. And you're like, what? You know, another How mind. fucking anime, dude. Like, again, so <laughs> anime. That whole sequence where it's like, no, it's the more distant hill. And yeah. it was like, yeah, that's it. That's straight up anime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, they do such a good job of just setting the scene and then making it dramatic and hitting these really high emotional beats and pauses. Yeah. Oh, dude, that was so good. 
I have a feeling we're just going to gush about this entire movie. I think we're both big fans. What are something that you thought they could improve? And I will throw this out first as you think about it. I thought like, oh, these sequences are a little bit too long. And it took me about halfway through the movie to realize like, oh, I know why. It's because they're actually, it's more of a music video in the middle of this. So mm. I think for, for American or for Western movies, what we would do is we would cut the song short. Like you don't hear the entire song, I the Tiger, while Rocky is boxing. You cut the song short. But in these, I was like, oh, well, wait a minute. What you could do is actually take this segment of the movie and that's the music video for this particular part. Like Not Too Not Too, which is the, the one that won the best uh, original song Oscar, um, is when they're, they're singing or when they're dancing at the uh, ball. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's the entire song. They didn't cut the song at all. Mm-hmm. The montage where they're becoming friends, I was like, man, this is kind of going on for a while. It's because it's the entire song. They didn't cut it at all. So I think that's just a perception of like, this is how we do movies and how they do movies. But I thought it was right. interesting that like they don't, they just like let the song play out and they just keep filling it in. So I think that part felt off to me at first until I got used to it. You're totally right. Uh, in the way that I perceived it a little long in some areas. I mean, again, I have no criticism about this movie. I, I love it. But the first time I watched it, it did feel like, oh, wow, they're really letting this scene breathe. They're yeah. really letting this moment just linger. And and I'm like, wow, you know, you don't always get that in American movies, especially action movies. Definitely not. And, you know, it's like punchy. It's like boom, boom, boom. On to the next thing. Okay, we're here. Need to get this. Okay, on to this. But they really let the time just, just build and let the scene build and let the tension build. And it's all really, really well done. But I did think, yeah, sometimes I'm like, oh, okay, maybe they can speed it up. And then the other thing, this is not a criticism at all. It's more on me than anybody else. But I, I don't know if I've said this yet, but I had the subtitles on and the dub. Mm-hmm. So the subtitles would be different than the dub. And so uh, it's what, what, were, what words were coming out of his mouth was different than what was being read at the bottom. And sometimes that would just make me chuckle. But yeah. it like added to how much I loved the movie. Like it didn't take anything away. It just kind of was funny at the difference of it. So yeah, I, I don't know. I just want to throw that out there. That was great. I'm going to add in. Let's see. I think it's this one. Okay. I'm going to add in another fun fact from later on. It's coming in now. Although the film found international success on Netflix, um, the director was angry with Netflix because they took only the Hindi dubbed version, not the original Talugu. Again, I'm sorry for the link and other dubbed versions like, there's like four of the languages. So because there are so many different languages in this region, they made this movie with multiple languages. So I think maybe the, the subtitles could have been based off of a whole different language at the time Ooh, because Netflix took the Hindi one with them, but there are multiple languages they use for this movie just because there's so many different, like if you think about like not only India, but also just beyond those borders too, they're all into this. So, um, yeah, absolutely. I have never really, and and this is completely on me, I've never dived into Indian-based movies. And after seeing this, I was like, damn, are a lot of Indian-based movies like this? So I'm like, this was so good. It was so entertaining. The story was so deep. And and the story also, I think, transcends countries. Who could, you Mm -hmm. could totally understand becoming friends with somebody, but you have opposing views. And then, and both of what they want are in complete conflict with the other, but it, you know, once they kind of get a, get out of those differences, they work together. It's just, it works everywhere. And now it also makes me want to go back and see more. I yes. would love to. I just don't know which way to go. I don't me know too. which way to point. So if you could point us into the next one, that's, you know, an Avengers level movie like this, right. uh, please let us know. Cause my God, this thing was so good. Yeah. Uh, that'd be really, really helpful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just, so crazy. This movie was was over the top as well. Uh, I, I also want to just talk about the scene where Beam breaks out Raju from the jail cell that was tiny in the ground. Yeah. And then they do this crazy, almost everything, everywhere, all, is, all at once. Ugh, can't even say it. With the raccoon on the guy's head. But basically, Raju's on Beam's shoulders with two guns. Yeah. And he's like reloading it for him and they're just destroying fools. I love that. I think it's because Raju's legs are broken at the time, right? That right. was the idea. Okay. But I, was just, I mean, I was just confirming. Oh my God. It just is, it's like hilarious and badass at the same time. And you're like, dude, Beam's yeah. this strong. Like he can knock fools. I mean, he could take down a tiger. Of course he could carry his buddy and jump over things. And yeah. And I think uh, for the Western audience, they might think like, oh, that's a little too ridiculous. But I've, I've watched enough, you know, especially Japanese movies. Where it's like, no, that's just, that's how they do it. Like, if you guys, um, 
Kung Fu Hustle, fantastic movie. Yeah, and that's a great and one. but that movie again, it's kind of very anime where it's like, oh yeah, he just jumps up, makes a big palm hand, it comes down and smashes it into the ground, and it's like <laughs> in Western audiences would not be okay with that, but for other countries, it's like it's just badass. Let's just yeah. make things more extreme. Who cares? Exactly. You know? Meanwhile, they Hawkeye's also, able to shoot anything anywhere. <laughs> you know, it's come on. Yeah, yeah, I know, definitely. But yeah, they they foreshadow it too with them um jumping on that tower. I don't know what that game's called or that tradition's called. But you know they climb up in this tower like a yeah. made out of like a human tower, I've and seen that uh, before, yeah, yeah, they they foreshadowed that was going to happen. So all this was great. Uh, yeah, I don't know where else do you want to go with it. Anything I know I'm just so excited. Uh, the <clears throat> let's go to the the very final battle. Uh, we see that it's I like how how grand this fight's been. Like the halfway point where we're attacking the actual fortress essentially, and and they have to like time the locks and doors into this final battle where it's just the two of them in a forest and they're just picking them all off. Like that felt like it was like bringing it down to a little bit more nitty gritty. And I think we see Raju take a form of a, a more typical Indian hero. And I think it was kind of like, I, I think in my perspective, it was him kind of like shedding the British disguise now. And it's like, now I'm here as, as an Indian hero and yeah. just, cleaning the house with that bow and arrow it was so freaking cool it was and and the fire behind it i mean he's walking through fire so many he literally, shots. <laughs> yeah he literally ascends from the water yeah so yeah they're just at their ultimate form now they're like yeah. super saiyan 4 they're ready yeah. just to destroy and then they do i mean being like starts crushing dudes with a motorcycle I mean, that was that so was ridiculous cool. in the best way when he just like swings a motorcycle around i'm like Sure, you're Hulk all of a sudden. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the dude held off a tiger. I was like, anything's possible with this that was, guy. That was incredible. And then he would like, apologize to the tiger afterwards. I was like, ah, damn, I'm rooting for this guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. He's just, and he's so sweet on top of it. Yeah. But then they finally invade the castle where Ray Stevenson and the wife are hiding. And just again, an epic way to just invade. They shoot a motorcycle through a window where all these bombs are. Yeah. Uh, and then this. I forgot how it completely ends, but I, I know that Ray Stevenson looks up and sees that his wife is dead so in good. the barbed wire, which was terrible, but I'm like, she kind of deserved it. I hated her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then we get the Ray Stevenson show off of it all. Yeah. Do you want to yeah. talk about that? Well, yeah, I mean, it was, I, I, okay. I try to remember exactly what happened. I literally just watched this. It was so much going on. Um, yeah, there was it was like boom explosions and like wait the forest and now it's day and like the morning is rising and like are the weapons buried now but no Raju pulls out a giant case so yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah Bean, and then Bean pulls out a giant case yeah yeah and then they they go to a god I can't even really honestly I can't even remember it I know they do the load the load aim shoot thing again right oh yeah that's right that's right take, yeah it was god I can't even remember it, to be honest with you I really can't mm, what did they but, do they are they're able to fulfill both of their goals, right? Beam gets Mali back. Yeah. Um, Raju gets the weapon for all of his people and gets to reunite with Sita, which is beautiful. Yeah. You know, his long lost love and that she's waited for him. He's been waiting for her and Beam gets to come back and bring Mali back to his village and the people celebrate. It is just one of those movies that has a happy ending as well as as dark as some of these moments can get in this show and and just really deep and sad for the history of these people. It also like, yeah, you get this really beautiful, happy ending where both heroes have won the day and and brought brought it home. You know, it's it's so cool. We then yeah. uh, get the final dance number and that's just more beautiful. Awesome. It's just like this nice cherry on top to this movie. And it's like, damn, I kind of wish more American movies had something like this. There were no credits during that. Correct. There were no credits during the final dance season. Uh, I, don't, thing. I don't think so. Because I was thinking when I was watching, I was like, man, they're front loading this thing with all the credits. The beginning of the movie starts with just, the, I honestly checked Netflix. I'm like, did I start this at the end or something like that? Cause that can happen if you're rewatching something. Yeah. But it's not. It's just they front loaded all the credits in the beginning, and then at the end was just a nice dance number, which I think was a nod to the characters they're based off of because they kept like referencing these big murals, right? Um, and including Sita even was like referencing a character that she was based off of. So, uh, but yeah, it was just cool. I wish I know like back in the Fred Astaire days, like we used to do that here in America, but not anymore. Let's go for it. Let's do it. You know? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. 
and it, it works. Um, yeah, can't say enough good things about it. And it's just, it's an awesome movie, I think, for for guys in a lot of ways, even though there's emotional beats and and a love story tied in there. But yeah, just guys and, and friendship like this is this is cool. I, lo- I love this. I just found a tweet from uh, the director of this movie who's talk, you know, talking about how sad he is that Ray had passed. And he shared a picture of the two of them on set. And it looks so weird seeing Ray like chuckling along with them in that full regalia. <laughs> and it <laughs> was just like, right? cause man, he was such a jerk in this movie and everything he said. Yeah. But, uh, that was it's cool like to share that tweet. <laughs> one of the guys from Inglorious Bastards wearing a Nazi suit, but they're like joking off, on <laughs> yeah. set, you know, with like the, with the off Jew, with the, yeah, off the camera Jew bear. or whatever. That's yeah. another one I want to do. And Glorious Bastards is so freaking good. That's okay. Absolutely. Add that to the list. Yep, definitely. Um, anything else you want to mention about this movie? I mean, it, it's hard because there's so much I want to mention about this movie. It was so good. But Yeah. No, I think we hit the big points, you know? It yeah. was action. It had comedy. It had a love story. It had a bromance. Like, what else can you say? And and it looks great. I mean, it truthfully looks like a great movie. This, You know, some of the stuff looks over the top, but... You know, I could say the same thing about some of the things in Shang Chi. So, you know, true. And I think Shang Chi is one of the best Phase Four movies that we got. So, yeah, true. Yeah, I agree with that. Really cool actors. I look forward to discovering more from this region of filmmaking and these actors. I look forward to me to to learning more because man, this and again, this is shown in the theater sometimes around my house. So once it is, I'm gonna go see it. Nice. I couldn't find it this time, but it's it's awesome. Let's go into our fun facts. All right, so um, Aluri Sita Ramaju and so okay, Raju and Beam <laughs> were freedom were freedom fighters of India who didn't meet in real life. The film is completely fiction, uh, fictitious, and based on an idea of what it would be like if those two had met. So yeah, that's what I was saying. It's like George Washington and Abraham Lincoln meeting kind of. Yeah, thing. or this is like the superhero version of One Night in Miami. I don't know if you ever watched that. Oh, my God. So good. It's like a fictional story about uh, Muhammad Ali, uh, Malcolm X, Sam Cooke, and Jackie Robinson. I think, I I don't know, I might be misquoting, but it's a fictional movie. And it it has uh, Benedict uh, Aldir, Aldis Hodge is in there as well. And it's a fictitious movie. Or at least it could have been possible. I don't know. But, you know, it's about what would have happened if they all did get stuck in a room together for one night? What would the conversation be like? And it goes off in this crazy, beautiful story. But uh, this movie, RRR, is like a fictitious version of these guys, but except they're superheroes and they're whooping that ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <for> them. <laughs> uh, okay. This film's title has different abbreviations in different languages, but it's commonly called RRR. Uh, it, it, all the different ones, okay, one of them, but a lot of times it's rage, war, blood in different languages. Um, oh, that's heavy. Yeah. In in both the Hindi and English version, it's rise, roar, revolt. But uh, for all the other ones, it's usually rage, war, and blood. Damn. It just, yeah. But it's, it's translated because, again, it's all these different regions have different languages. So mm-hmm. it, the movie has different languages for everything. Yeah. Uh, the song Natu Natu was shot in Ukraine at the palace in Ukraine, uh, in Kiev, a few months oh, before the onset of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. So it was just a few months before Russia came in. What? They filmed that, yeah. Oh my God, that's crazy. I wonder if that place is still up and standing. I don't know. It was a beautiful place, though, where they're doing all that dancing. It was beautiful. Oh yeah, absolutely. Perfect setting. Oh man, that that is like kind of bittersweet in a way. Yeah. All right, and then uh, Ram, Ram Karan, called the action sequence where he fights a mob alone, which is that first one, which was like so ridiculous. Yeah. Um, the most suffocating stunt he'd ever done. Every time the shot was finished and the director said cut, it took a while for the team to actually spot him because of the dust. A guy was given a white flag just to wave at the assistant director to tell him where Trump was so they could pick him up real quick. He claimed he did not receive a single scratch after 30 days of filming that scene. Oh my God, that's yeah. great. 30 days and getting dudes jumping on you and trampling you. No, thank you. Wow. He, I hope he got extra paid for this movie. I want to give props to the director on that scene too, because not only did that feel like to me again, it felt like a video game moment, but I liked how the guy he had to go arrest was wearing red. 
because it was right. like the entire time you're like, that's the target. And it just was smart. That was smart. Movie. It was. Yeah. The coloring in it was very smart in the costuming. Yeah. Well, good point. All right. And then uh, the last one, uh, talking about how the Natu Natu song was shot. Um, one of the actors revealed that it was shot on the last leg of the film. He and Sharam uh, were tortured for 65 nights, tortured quotes, 65 nights. And the director stressed more the synchronization than the steps being compl uh, complicated. So they, that dance scene at the ball took 65 nights to film for not to not to. Yeah. In Ukraine. Yeah. Can you imagine like going and having to like dance your ass off and put on, you know, this three piece suit for 60 nights, you know, for like two months to that's props to them. That scene again, it really works in the movie. It's phenomenal. Man, 65 nights though. Ugh, I don't want to do anything for 65 nights. <laughs> Last one I'm adding in real quick. Cause I just caught this one. English filmmaker Edgar Wright praised the film noting it was the only film he had ever seen where the intermission card itself got a round of applause. Wow. That makes so much sense that there was an intermission card because that's where this movie felt like it was two parts. So yeah. after that big attack, you'd have the intermission card. Everybody go get your snacks, come back, watch the second half of this movie. That makes so much sense now. I'm glad I caught that. Yeah, absolutely. That does. Edgar Wright is a pretty amazing director in, in his own right. So that's like high praise from him as well. Uh, yeah. Interesting. I, why don't we do that more here in the U S like have intermissions in movies? We used to do it all the time. I think we don't have the attention span anymore, but we used to do it all the time. Yeah. Especially for drive-ins, man. I would love that because especially, you know, with an Oppenheimer coming up and as movies seem to get longer from these higher up directors. Yeah. Intermissions would be great. I love it. Cause I, I mean, even in avatar way of water, I probably left the theater. Well, I left, I watched it two or three times at theaters and each time I left at a different part and it was great. Like I needed to go to the bathroom. It was long. Also, my soda was empty. I needed to refill that bitch. So like, yeah, yeah. I wish we had, you know, yeah. Intermissions. I still got to watch Avatar 2. I haven't watched it yet. Are you kidding me? I know. D don't. Squid's Are already on top of me, me for that. I know. Jesus, dude. If, if theaters was like, yo, quick, not, we're getting off track. Not the most amazing movie in the world, but seeing it in a theater with that. Oh my gosh. You felt like you were swimming through these beautiful waters of Pandora. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's on. It's on HBO now. <laughs> I'll watch it there. You, Squeaks was getting on my ass so hard for that because it's like he loved it so much. And I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm not like, too excited. <laughs> you you got to sit like three inches away from the TV so you can feel the scale like you got to see in theaters and then just wear like put two bass speakers next to you on both yeah. sides. So you can I'll move it. the couch. Right. So every summer during Fourth of July, I do that with Jaws. I move the couch right in front of the TV and then like, you know, get some snacks and the dogs and I just watch Jaws again. I fucking love that movie. And That's so awesome. I'll have to do that for, for Avatar this time and <laughs> get right up in the action. Absolutely. Back to RRR. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's do our reviews for it. I mean, I don't even know how I'm going to do a review for this. What, what would be yours? <sighs> wow. Put me on the spot. All right. My review is. A f this is my first movie watching a Bollywood film. It's an awesome action movie with a lot of heart, some great comedy, and one of the most well-displayed views of male friendship. I don't know why I said it with a question mark. Male friendship? Um, <laughs> but it is. It's an awesome bromance, and it seems to deliver on every aspect of the film. There's so many parts that are interesting in the beginning that have big payoffs in the end. This yeah. movie keeps going and it seems to get crazier and crazier and ultimately still finds a satisfying conclusion <laughs> with this beautiful dance number in the middle of the movie and at the end that perfectly end cap it. This movie for me is one of my favorites and highly recommend it if you're ever looking to get into the Bollywood style. I yeah. don't know if that's the right word. That works. You're the one that's typing it up at the end, so you can change the word later on. <laughs> yeah, I'll type it up. Whatever. I'll fix this up. Um, okay. Post. Yeah. God. RRR is a phenomenal movie and deserves a viewing from everybody. If you're interested in Bollywood or just movies in general, this is a must watch. Everything is well acted. The action is untouched 
by other movies. Uh, the story has you hooked and three hours flies by. RRR is required viewing. I don't know what else to say, honestly. Dude, that was awesome. Nailed it. Freaking knocked so, it out of the park. I'm watching the trailer right now on the side right now because IMDb automatically plays it. Yeah. And I'm just like, that was badass. I remember that part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, I know, definitely. So happy we did this. Uh, yeah, what do you got, man? What's the challenge? What's the next challenge? All right, so next we're actually going to bring a guest on. Uh, this is our All second right. time bringing a guest on. We're going to bring in Alan Dunford, uh, author of Pocus Hocus, Grandma Chainsaw, and a brand new book coming out, comic book coming out called Horse and Hell. Uh, we're going to have him come on, and he suggested a movie that is our next dumpster fire movie, and it is oh. Twisted Pear. And we've, you and me both watched the trailer for this already. He, he was sharing ah. us a list of movies he wanted to see, and this was the one that I thought was the most ridiculous that had like extra sci fi for it. So, Watch the trailer for it, guys. It's rough. <laughs> yeah, these dumpster fire episodes are a doozy. But uh, yeah, you know what? I'm happy we have Alan on to kind of lighten the mood, bring this the the, the energy up after this. Uh, who knows? Maybe it'll surprise me. But from the trailer, it just sucked the life out of me. And uh, we'll see. I don't know. The dumpster fire episode are fun. So we should have done this the other way around where we watched RRR afterwards. Yeah, yeah right. Excellent movie after a bad movie. It <laughs> totally. <been> <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us uh, again. Please go watch this movie. I can't suggest it enough. It's, it's so good. It's on Netflix for uh, US. Absolutely. Yeah. Check it out, everybody. All right. Bye. Oh.